Wait, don't trash that used or broken computer, monitor, or TV. Do the right thing. Recycle your unwanted or non-working electronics for free. You can recycle computers, monitors, and televisions with eCycle Washington. Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations may drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Find the location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's eCycleWashington.org. You can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW The Rock of Seattle. BBCU presents the KISW Financial Advisor. Here to talk money, please welcome Todd. I invented numbers so I know how this stuff works. Peach! Oh yeah. If you had a question for Todd Peach, and you might have a lot of questions right about now because, uh, well, you know, this, this we're getting hit in a lot of ways by this coronavirus, yeah. financially especially. 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. And don't forget, Todd is, uh, well, he's uh, he's just been doing so much in the world of finance and pretty much his entire life. Uh, hanging with BECU for the last 16 years. And BECU is uh, still a great place to do your banking, man. If, uh, if They do everything a bank does, except they take care of you because you are much as in charge of that place as anybody else because it's a credit union. BECU.org. You live, you work, attend school in Washington State. Boom, you can be part of BECU. And BJ, we've uh, wiped... Todd down with hand sanitizer, and uh, we have him <laughs> via technology with Skype. That way, he's socially distanced from us knuckleheads. Yeah, this is something I think Todd's <laughs> always wanted. <laughs> it's probably a good thing for you guys. Yeah. Welcome, Todd. Welcome to the show. And yes, in this uh, age of social distancing, we've got you on Skype. And uh, Todd, uh, you know, I think uh, a statement from somebody who at least understands finances better than anybody in this room, uh, arguably. We are afraid of what's happening, not only physically, but financially. What, what are you telling your family members? What are you telling your friends? What are you telling anybody at BECU as we are uh, going through what we're going through? Well, what I'm telling my family and myself is uh, stocks, every, the market's on sale, BJ. This doesn't happen very often. Um, I mean, we go back to the dot-com bubble. I don't know if you remember that in the early 2000s. Um, we go back to the, the recession in 2008, 2009. Um, when, when the market's down, people panic. And now is not the time that I'm telling my family, my kids, to be selling out of the market, um, especially if you have time on your side. If you're in your 20s and 30s, this is a great opportunity um, to maybe even looking at increasing your contributions. Uh, but now is not the time to panic and sell because once you sell, your, your loss is realized. It's not realized um, until you sell. That's a really interesting point. That's a very, very good point because obviously I've looked at my retirement account and I'm like, oh my God. And, but I still do have those stocks. Like it's not like they're worth that forever. Uh, but when I sell them right now, then they, yeah, that's what they're worth forever. I really did take a loss. That's a good thing to remember. Yeah, absolutely. And if, and if you're, you know, you're losing sleep and you're, it, you're taking on more risk than, you can handle. And that would be now is not the time to make that change. Um, but at some point when the market does rebound, um, that would be the time to talk to somebody about rebalancing and getting into something that uh, maybe isn't quite as risky. Although we have seen bonds take a hit this time around as well. So really cash is king as we went back to, as we said, in 2008, 2009. Yeah, I hear gold, but, I hear gold is doing pretty well. Yeah, I mean, that's always the contrary. It was it, 
Yeah, absolutely. People flock to cash and gold, right? That gold's the safe haven um, in, in a lot of people's minds. I've been flocking to ice cream. That's been my problem. <laughs> yeah. I've been stress eating, Todd. Yeah, ice cream is really... You gotta do that once in a while. Yeah. There's no value to it after I eat it. Well, you're gaining. That's true. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) That's going up at least. That's the one thing that's going up. And Yeah, uh, so what I'm doing, 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 I'm doing with my kids is, um, they have, you know, they have Roth IRAs that they contribute to. Um, so we're accelerating that. We're gonna, we're gonna put a little bit more, putting more in now than we would later in the year. Um, so just increasing our contributions to the IRAs, to the 401ks, um, you know, start to, you know, increase, put a little bit more in now on the front end of the year than you might on the back end. So, so and if, if, it, if everybody does that, Todd, I mean, if people do realize, hey, look, the stock market's on sale right now, that should drive up the price again, right? It should make those stocks worth more if everyone's buying them. Well, I mean, there's a lot of money, institutional money on the side, BJ, that we don't see and we don't control. So... Um, the big pension funds and the, there's a, just a ton of money where our, us consumers really don't drive a lot of that. So we get to take advantage of them making those, those, those changes. <laughs> And Todd, let me ask you this because this has really irritated a lot of Americans when they found out a, a, a handful of senators sold off all their stocks before they because they had information about the virus more so than we did at the time, us regular people. Mm-hmm. And they're going back and forth about calling that insider trading or not. Uh, you know, Todd, from your from your professional viewpoint, is what those senators uh, is what they did wrong? Is it a loophole or is it in fact yes, insider trading? What are you hearing? Well, I, I haven't heard anything, BJ, um, to be quite honest. Um, but I have to ask myself if somebody knows something that the rest of the country doesn't know that in this case, a virus and that in the impact isn't to me, that sounds like insider trading to me. Um, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, and it's pretty, I mean, this is why people are getting angry at politicians, is the fact that, you know, you just, it's hard to trust anything anybody says in the world of politics when you see behavior like that, and we just don't need yeah. that right now. I mean, that people are already going nutty, and it's, it was, that was a horrible story for me to see. I just sat there and I thought, gosh, really, guys, really? Ugh. Uh, it's a, I haven't heard much recently. Have you, VJ, in the last couple of days about I, that? I mean, I, I, I think, about this. I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm afraid they're burying this story as much as possible. And, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and you know how that goes. There's a lot for us to be concerned with. They keep showing us pictures of other countries and people lying on hospital floors. And, and you know, surely that's going to get our attention. But I, I want to keep looking, Todd. I'm going to keep paying attention. I just I haven't heard anything lately, though. No. All the news recently has obviously been about the the bailout and the stimulus is all that yeah. that's supposedly being the details coming out today. So we'll hear more. So. Uh, someone texted in saying, I'm doing a USDA home loan supposed to close at the end of this month. Do you have any insight on if this shutdown is going to delay me in closing on the house? I um, haven't heard anything. Um, I mean, I, it, um, a lot of the closings and different things on mortgages and different things these days, electronic, there are a lot of it's being able to do, being done electronically. Um, so it, I, I don't anticipate any problems. Uh, mortgages are going crazy right now. People are looking to refinance. Um, a lot of the escrow companies, again, have the technology uh, for you to sign remotely um, and or drive up type type thing. So shouldn't I don't think that unless the federal government for some reason um, shuts down and that doesn't get through. But the, I can tell you banks are operating as normal as they should. Well, that's good news because, again, uh, I would think that, you know, if people want to buy a house, they shouldn't, you mm-hmm. know what, they should want to let that happen because we do need to have some finance working. Absolutely. And and so, yeah, that is an important point. I mean, that, that financial institutions are one of those industries that are key um, that are not closed right now. So um, you should still be able to go to your bank or credit union, um, conduct your business. I can tell you at BECU we have um, – uh, some locations in, in areas we have closed where we have another location maybe a few miles away um, and or we've reduced hours somewhat. But that doesn't uh, mean that we're not open. You can still use your branches. We do encourage our members to use the, the mobile banking and the and mobile check deposits and online banking, all the remote services that that way you don't have to worry about, um, you know, going in and possibly exposing somebody. But if you absolutely needed a branch, um, they are open. And I'm sure you can find out uh, which branches are open at BECU.org, like uh, where the closest one near you. And, 
And uh, again, yes, if you absolutely. live, work, or attend school in Washington State, uh, you can be part of BECU. Uh, if you have a question for Todd, 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Uh, someone texted him saying, I'm one of the few fortunate ones who can still work, and because of the increased business, my last paycheck was substantially more than usual. My question for Todd is, should I take the extra money and pay off my credit card, or should I take advantage of the low market and invest, or should I give the money to my friend Steve, who works on the radio and wants to get more ice cream? <laughs> wow, that's really specific. I thought that was weird, too. I, uh, I'm i always for paying off your debt first. Get that credit card debt out of there. Um, you're, you're, you're guaranteeing yourself a return of whatever your interest rate is on that credit card. So it's I can guarantee you it's probably not lower than 7 or 8%. Um, probably more of the 10, 12%. So you're guaranteeing a return um, of whatever that interest rate is. So at no risk to you. So get that debt paid off. And Todd, uh, right now, of course, uh, all I can hear in you is, is everything you say every time you're on this show. It feels like every time you're here, you tell people what is the first thing they should do when they have a little extra money, but the first thing they should check to see if they got it. And that, yeah, would- absolutely. We want to have that. Got to have that emergency fund, PJ, one. right? So, I mean, right yeah. now is what a lot of people could be dipping into. Hopefully they had that emergency fund, the folks that did get laid off, furloughed, and, you know, all the businesses that closed. I mean, that's this is when you need that fund. Yeah, absolutely. So a perfect example. We talked about this probably, what, in the last, last couple times on the show. Um, and now we hit it. And, uh, and if you've lost your job or you've, you know, temporarily out of work, this is when the emergency fund's there. So you can pay that rent, pay that mortgage and make it when, any debt payments you have just to get you through, a, you know, that three to six months. Well, there will, there will, will be another side to this. We will come out of it, um, but it's just going to take a little time. Well, since you brought that up, uh, you know, the, the, the president made a statement yesterday that some thought, some people thought were hopeful, was hopeful, other people not happy about. Do you have the sunshine outlook that by Easter we could be getting back to normal? I, I, I mean, it was baffling to th- think that was an announcement that was made, but, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you come up with an Easter, um, you know, uh, how you can say that. I mean, that's wishful thinking. I hope so, right? But um, no, Jesus and the I, jobs I, return Easter. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't. I don't know how you can. I don't know how you could put a specific date to this at this point in time. Yeah, I, I, um, I was yeah. hoping that there was some, you know, that he had con- that, that maybe there were some other financial people or whatever that thought maybe this was the case. Or I, I mean, I it was just such an odd thing to put out there when none of us believed that it was going to be that quickly we, we would be able to get back to our lives and uh, and start doing business again and people would you know be able to go places again. And so I, I thought it was so odd, but I thought, well, I'm not just going to dismiss this. Maybe there's some information I don't have, and I thought, well, we're talking to you today, so you're not seeing anything that makes you believe that it's sooner than a little bit later. No, we have to see these, you know, the cases slow down, um, especially in Italy. Italy is about 10 days ahead of us um, on, on when they were exposed and different things happening. So if you see, see Italy start to slow down, then I would hope that uh, we might be there, you know, shortly thereafter. But, Um, But again, they're still 10 days ahead and and increasing. But as we start to see these things come down and come in and get in control, that maybe we can start to make that determination. But so long as we continue to increase day after day, I don't know how you can predict when that end will be. And do you think a statement like that, Todd, is just to maybe get people to stop selling everything and stop panicking? Or is it more maybe he's just posturing so that uh, he might get elected? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what good this could do because it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot to be able to put a date like that on there. Yeah, you know, I don't know, BJ, to be quite honest. I really, I really don't know why you would want to come out and say a specific date at this point. I mean, all hands are on deck. Um, practicing social distancing. All of us should do that. Um, we stepped up the game here in Washington state a little bit, um, over the last couple of days. Um, if we continue to do that, then all the experts say we, we, we will come out of this, um, in fairly short order. But I, I just don't think, you know, you can say two to three weeks, we're, we're good to go. Um, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's four, maybe it's six, maybe it's eight. I, I don't know. We got Todd Peach from BECU.org. And if you got a question, 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Let's go to Chrissy and Chimicum. Chrissy, you are on the rock with Todd Peach from BECU. Go ahead. Morning, guys. Um, hey, Chrissy. Okay, so I'm 49 years old and I've been on disability for about 13 years now. It's a very low income. Of course, I have rent mm-hmm. utilities and all that kind of thing, but I have been inundated with emails and things trying to get me to 
sign up for something in regards to investing money. Is there anything out there that you know of, Todd, that isn't some kind of scam or that I could possibly afford? I mean, I know it's kind of a general question, but... So, what are they trying to get you to do, Chrissy? I'm sorry, I missed that part. Hello? Are you there? So she's uh, what she's saying, Todd, is that she's getting emails telling her to invest your money here, invest your money there. And she just wants yeah. to know a safe place. Like, is there a safe place for her to go and invest her money? And she's looking. Is, is, so that's basically her question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, oh, yeah, but no. it kind of uh, expounds on the fact that I'm on disability. So it's like I have very, very, very little money to put into anything. I mean, is yeah. there anything out there that who would take, you know, very, very little money and be able to maybe help me out in the future. Um, so, Christy, I am not aware of any investments that would have any benefit, from, you know, for, for those that are disabled. Um, if you're looking to buy a house at some point, yes, there are programs out there um, for um, individuals with the disabilities out there. They have grants and various things that are part of that. So if, ha- if owning a home in your future is something, then yes, there are programs out there, but for normal day-to-day investments, uh, for retirement or et cetera, I'm not aware of anything, um, out there on that would uh, that would be any different than anybody else would have access well, to. Well, and that's a good question, Todd. See, she also brought up the point that she doesn't think she has a lot of money to put in, and would, and therefore, because her money, because she's not putting in a lot, they wouldn't bother with her. And I do know that there are different investment firms that, depending on how much you make, they you might go to a different tier every once in a while. There might be a company that would handle you if you were all of a sudden had a net worth of ten million or something. But you know, everybody should be able to find something, right, Todd? If they want to save money, there should be something out there a long-term program isn't there oh absolutely yeah i mean there's pro- there's programs out there bj where you can set up a, a roth ira or just a regular ira and put 25 bu- bucks a month in or 50 bucks so um that's not going to limit you from getting exposure to um you know to, to the market or bonds uh, at all there's all kinds of programs out there yeah, and and I and there's a, there's a lot of companies, you know, the, the 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 big financial advisor companies that would I think they would take her, you know, and they, she'd be able to have absolutely. Some sort of, yeah, I mean, yeah, and there's that there's actually um, working in the state of Washington, we're trying to get um, an exchange kind of uh, set up. So if, there's a lot of folks that don't have access to um, to four hundred one ks at their workplace. So really trying to work on getting that expanded expanded. So um, you know, folks that don't have access um, and don't have a big company that has a, an IRA or a, that option to contribute that they have easy access to do that. So yeah, if you want to email me, um, go to BJ's page. I'm happy to, um, you know, direct you to some resources and, or if you're interested, get you, you know, connected to one of our advisors. Cause we certainly have programs that can help along those lines as well. Yeah. Todd's right. If you go to KISW.com and scroll down, you'll see the banner with Todd's smiling face. You click on that and that's where you can email him with all your questions. And Todd, uh, it has flown by. I appreciate you giving us some uh, stability and some wise words during a time where we're feeling a lot of instability. I do appreciate that, buddy. Likewise, BJ. All right, you take care. Todd Peach from BECU.org. Don't forget, man, you live, you work, or attend school in Washington State. And yes, you can be a BECU member. Now we got to tell you about two guys who were in a fishing tournament. All right? That's it. And, um, it wasn't Danny, as we learned. He's not very good at fishing. Yeah, it wasn't Danny. Yeah. No. Uh, these guys actually ended up uh, being arrested. Because, uh, you know, you can win money at some fishing tournaments. And these guys, uh, they were cheating. I'll tell you what happened at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Take back your space. Stop storing old electronics you'll never use again. Recycle your computers, monitors, and televisions for free with eCycle Washington. This free program can be used by households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations across the state. Drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Please check for the drop-off location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org. That's one word, eCycleWashington.org, and click on the Where Can I Recycle link. For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over, crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season, where greatness lives on in every game. Visit nba.com slash 75 to learn more. 
99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So back in October of 2018, there's a 45-year-old guy. His name was Robert. And a 35-year-old guy, his name is Cameron. They're both from Utah. Both like fishing. Matter of fact, they competed together in a bass fishing tournament. Top prize, $2,500 for catching the five heaviest fish in two days. Okay. And after Robert and Cameron turned in their fish on the first day, they were in second place. Nice. But they were soon disqualified. Because the tournament officials noticed that their bass didn't look like any of the other ones that people had been catching. <laughs> Said, quote, they had little heads and fatter bodies indicating a very different diet and red fins, which indicated they'd undergone stress. And yes, it turned out that Robert and Cameron had smuggled in pre-caught bass from a reservoir in a what? different part of Utah. Yeah. Love this. How, I guess I mean, you do anything for money. People yeah, 2500 bucks. Because I'm like, how sad is it that you've gone in your life that you are now cheating at a fishing competition? Oh, dude, they, then you would not want to hear about the Magic the Gathering competitions where people, people cheat. Are, oh, oh all the time. yeah, man, all the time. Because there's again, you've got big money. I mean, they've got like you know five figures on the line in some of these Magic the Gathering tournaments, and so people are stacking the deck, and putting cards in their pockets. I mean, just like the old school poker games. See, this is why I like the competitions that I get involved in that are tournaments. Because the big uh, the big plan is just to get as wasted as possible, and that's winning. It's not winning the actual tournament. Like when we do our hockey tournaments, we actually look forward to losing because we don't want to wake up as early to play the next game. <laughs> so in a way, uh, we're cheating yeah. by getting so wasted that we can't really play on the ice, yeah. so that we can get up at noon as opposed to eight a.m. Yeah, you're the uh, yeah you're you're cheating for very different reasons. Yes, yes. to yeah. lose. Yeah, you're really. Uh, <laughs> There was a long investigation on Robert and Cameron, uh, but last week, I mean, this was this was October of 2018, and finally last week they were both charged with felony bribery or threat to influence a contest and some misdemeanor wildlife charges. So they could get up to five years in prison over this. That's going to be a fun conversation with your cellmates. Yeah. Why, why are you behind bars? I cheated at a fishing competition. But how about this? You know, a hundred years ago, if you told somebody these two guys went and took some fish and tried to, you know, fake a fishing contest, nobody would say throw them in jail for five years. It's funny how far we've come as a society. And they must take it very serious. Because I'm with you. Like, there's part of me I was just like, dude, if we just go buy a fish. Yeah. And just bring it in. Like, you put it in your pants. And then when (laughs) no one's looking. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Is that a fish in your pants? No, I'm just happy to see you. Yeah. yeah. It's like, why am I paying? I'll give you 60% of the, the, the cut. I'll take only 40. Yeah. It sounds like a Seinfeld bit. It surely does. It does. <laughs> well, uh, well, we have proof now that they're pretty They're pretty smart, these guys that uh, run these fishing con- uh, contests. You know, to the point where they know, they can tell, look at a fish and go, that's not our fish. It's yeah. not the fish from our place. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're when you're you know, that, that invested in a fishing tournament, you're probably really aware of what fish looks like. Yeah, this competition. Those guys weren't apparently. Yeah, and so they could. Would I mean? Wouldn't that be funny if, in fact, they got five years? I mean, seriously, like at some point, is someone ever going to, you know, or are they going to get better call Saul and he'll just basically get them off? There you go. You know, you know, seriously, dude. I got to imagine that they're not going to spend much time behind bars, if any time behind bars in this situation. Hardened criminals. Well, well, I think Netflix needs to follow these two, though, and they yeah. can make a new documentary. It could be <laughs> the Fish Kings. How great would it be if they go to jail when they're letting inmates out in a lot of places because they just, you know, they have coronavirus concerns? Yeah, but you guys really did break the law bad. We're putting you inside. Yeah, you guys really are public enemies. You guys are one the and two. worst. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, which I know Rev and I are. Uh, Rev, are you still a fan? Yeah, well, I kinda. mean, I, this last season I watched the first four episodes. Oh, so I, no, you're not. I, I've I've fallen off. I plan to maybe, probably, sh- yeah, watch okay, it. Okay, that's a no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that you're was right. you're right, Danny. That was really not a good yes or no. It right just there. makes me really happy because when I first started working here, he gave me so much crap for falling off the bandwagon, and I, I, because I fell off like in season six. I loved that show so much. Yeah, and Rev would always give me a hard time, and now I can give him a hard time. Yeah. I lasted almost ten years. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first, uh, spoiler alert, last, uh, this past Sunday's episode, another big character left the show. Um, I won't tell you how she left the show, Rev, but she left the show. That way you get to see. Oh, you I've already read spoilers. Oh, you already read spoilers. Yeah. Why would you do that? Because uh, I, uh, I guess I really don't care. Okay, I'm I guess you don't. for spoilers sometimes. Even when it says spoiler alert on a wrestling thing, I'm like, oh, I still want to kind of know now. 
So I'll, I'll, I'll do that to myself where I'm like, well, I can't get mad at anyone. I spoiled it myself. Yeah. Well, with The Walking Dead, there's two ways to leave the show. Either you're going off on some mysterious adventure or they don't even tell you why a person's not on the show anymore. Uh, they just hint at it. Or, you know what, you die and then you have two choices when you die. You either get killed quickly and they, they stab you in the head so you don't become a zombie or you get to become a zombie which a lot of people want to become when they leave that show. You hear a lot of actors go, please kill me if I'm leaving the show so I get to be a, I get to be a walker. I want to come back as a zombie. Right. And uh, some people have gotten to do that. Some people haven't. Uh, I won't spoil it for people that don't know what happened with Michonne in case you still haven't seen the episode, whether or not she is alive, whether or not she's dead, whether or not she became a zombie. I'll let you discover that on your own. So you left to work on a tiger farm with the Tiger King, Joe Exotic. Well, oh, you know what? That That'd would be, be a great. That would be really cool. That'd be a That'd good crossover. Yeah. I will tell you this: she did go with somebody who was bad as crazy in the last episode. Last episode, I will tell you this: she got involved with somebody Negan? who could have been Tiger King. Um, no, not Negan. Uh, you know you the were, name? Well, because she's got to beat people with a bat. So oh, yeah, I, right, I, I was yeah. like, oh, is this yeah. like a little like pun? Well, actually. <laughs> how crazy is this? Now that I think about it, he was actually heavily involved. I won't say how. You kind of really... My stupid questions yeah. are going to cause you to spoil it. I should stop I, asking yeah. questions. Great, actually. I, I totally <laughs> forgot about that. You know what? I was going to dismiss you and go, oh, wait a minute. No, I totally forgot a big part of that episode. And yes, Negan was a big part of it. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's the sad thing for us fans that are still watching the show. They're not going to be able to wrap up the season. The last episode, they said, AMC was like, yeah, we had to stop production because of current events. So we will not see a season finale for quite some time. Maybe. Oh, I thought this was the season finale. No. Oh. No, there's wow. still more. Ep- you know how they go. They always give you the biggest episodes. And then the, yeah. sometimes the season finale is a little bit le- you know, less of a cliffhanger than the previous episode. Uh, but yeah, so um, this is one of the shows. I think a lot of shows are going to make this announcement that they're not going to be able to finish up their seasons. Damn. Oh, this reminds me of the writer's strike that destroyed Heroes. Yeah. Oh, You're I right. forgot about the writer's strike. Oh, You're right. right. Yeah, that's when we got great shows like Caveman. Mm. Caveman was good. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that was terrible. You almost got through that sentence. <laughs> I can't even I can't even make a gullible <laughs> joke about that. Think about this, though, guys. We talk about the writer's strike. I, Danny, Vicky, do you remember that at all? I remember because Heroes turned to crap afterwards, and that was my all-time favorite show. And here's the thing. There Six. was... I think Six. Netflix was just still sending you movies on uh, on DVD back then. I don't think Netflix was an original program thing, and there were there was nothing else. I forgot they were kind of like Redbox, but they mailed them. Yeah, I mean, is that <laughs> nuts? <laughs> that writer's strike was a big deal, and we did not have all of these streaming services to fall back oh, on yeah, like we do no. now. So, th- I mean, really, we can survive this better if they stop doing new shows because of all this, I think, because of probably all the stuff that the streaming services have, which we didn't have before. So this, I don't know if it'll be as bad as the writer's strike, but eventually it might hit everything where there might not, there might not be enough original shows. So it's said, Migs, I just tuned in and I heard you mention the Tiger King. Did you watch that train wreck finally? Yeah, I'm three episodes, three or four episodes in. I can only handle it like... One episode at a time. Yeah. Because there's just so many moments during this show, and it's about a guy that runs like a tiger farm or wildcat farm, and he's just out of his mind. Like, there's so many, so many layers of insanity to this, sh- to this show on Netflix, and it's a documentary series. But I, at, at least every few minutes, I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. There's something else that will happen on the show. In the last episode, I won't spoil anything because someone got upset the last time, but... <laughs> It's just like there's a moment where you're like, you have got to be kidding me. Wow. What, there is nobody that's likable on this show, except for the girl that's missing her arm now. Yeah. Well, yeah, you kind of feel sorry for her now. She's got no arm. But then again, she she goes back for more punishment, doesn't she? Well, she goes back to work. Yeah. Not, I mean, it depends uh, on what you define I think I'd be as done. punishment. Yeah, well, dude, I mean, it's a cult. Yeah. This, this whole little crew yeah. that he has, they're just, obviously, they're, they're people that were down on the dumps, and he's, he's quote, unquote, saved them, and they just follow him around blindly. I mean, there's one part, dude, where because he he's a gay dude, the Tiger King, uh, Joe Exotic, and he has two husbands. So, oh, look at me, this is Mr. Polyamory. And I, 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 I would, the way that he, because he, one of the guys was uh, said that he was straight when he met him, and he's like, "Oh, you're straight, huh?" And then he poses a question, and the guy answers the question. He goes, "Oh, I could, t- I could get you to." hook up with me based on the question it was really just, the question okay what's the question <laughs> i'll try and frame it in the best possible way. so there's, here we so go the, so there's a yeah. question right. this is exciting so there's a question you can ask straight people and if they answer it a certain way you know that, that you can get them to become gay that that they might just not be willing to admit that they're gay oh, that but they, they might already be yes oh okay right so the guy that he asked the question to that now is his husband he said when you watch adult films and you're watching a guy with a girl okay 
does the size matter with the guy when you're watching the films? Hmm. Oh. Like, would you rather watch a film with a guy that's, you know, like Tiny Tim? Or would you like to watch the film with, you know, Big Man Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> and if you say yes or no to that, he can tell you whether or not you're ready to go to... Uh, ready to hang out with Joe Exotic. Yeah, ready to hang out with him. So or, what, what would be your answer? Wow. See, my answer is pathetic. What it, would it be? I want to see people smaller than me. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel better about myself. <laughs> Danny? I don't think and I, they're hard to find, okay? Oh, yeah. All right, Steve. I don't find them much. It honestly doesn't bother me either way. I I don't pay attention okay. to, to that enough. Rev? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't bother me, and it doesn't, yeah. Doesn't well, then I feel like uh, n- none of you guys would probably be switched over to uh, Joe Exotic's team. No, but I'm neurotic. I think yeah. that's what we found oh, out yeah. about me. Oh, yeah. I'm switched over to the I probably should get more therapy team. Because the guy was like, oh, I would want to watch the bigger guy. I will say that I like to see. Oh. Here's the thing. Huh. The it's, thing it's a about fascinating the, show. The, the thing about watching the the bigger guy is you really get to see skills. You know, you go that that girl's got skills. Right. When you watch a baseball game, you don't want to watch you know double A baseball. You want to watch the pros. But so he's saying that if you enjoy if you enjoy seeing uh, you know a woman do some fine work. That's really subliminal. It's like, no, it's not you're enjoying the woman to see the fine work. You actually, you know what? You're attracted to men. You're attracted to the guy. Yeah. Well, oh. someone says that that's an old Ron White yep. joke. No, I, I didn't know say, that. He stole it from him. Not surprised that this guy's a fan of Ron oh. White's comedy. <laughs> Ron White is pretty <laughs> awesome. I love Ron White. Don't get Same. me wrong. Yeah, who's he called Tater How hysterical is that? That really, that's all that is, is a Ron White joke. And now he's turning it into a Ron like, oh, no, this is all, yeah, this is a life thing. Test. At wow. least 2003, yeah. at the very le- latest. Or Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> It's been around for a while. I remember that. Well, That's Tiger King funny. now we know is a comedy thief. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, another thing to add to his resume of being a great guy. I, I, Vicky did a Google search and it shows a bunch of pictures of Ron White, but then it also shows just a guy from uh, the, the in, in a naked situation. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Whoa. Just for searching for Ron White? I was looking for the actual... Some people will take a picture of the guy and then put the whole uh, little spiel about it like next to it. So I was looking for it and I typed in porn and oh, trying um, to get the keywords. Okay. And so that's why. Google search was Ron White penis porn. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not off. surprised then that somebody yeah. would show up naked, Vicky. I mean, when that's you put so yeah. funny. Yeah, okay. yeah, so it says that Joe Exotic, he uses an old Ron White joke. Uh, look it up. It's hilarious. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well... I don't know if there's any truth to that or not. No, I mean, Ron White. Said, I mean, Joe, I wasn't believing Tiger, Tiger King Joe, but I mean, Ron White, we know he knows so much. So well, yeah. He knows everything. Yeah, and so that's like the least holy crap moment during the show. That, wow. I just thought that was a funny moment during the show. It's there's, not the first time that I've heard uh, 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 a homosexual dude say that. Really? I, I've, yeah, I've had some people say that to me. And it, not to me generally, but said how they've been able to, you know, they, they said, oh, that person is ready to go to my team, that person. And, and I'll be like, how can you tell if a guy who seems to be heterosexual is willing to maybe m- maybe he's not? He go, oh, I can tell you there's ways to tell. I'm like, I, I have no clue. But yeah, on that one, like I thought about it after he said it. And I was like, oh, how can I answer that? And I was just like, so I had to go if I was watching things on you know a website, would I click on a thumbnail or, or X out of it? And I was like, no, that really has no factor in whether or not I'm enjoying a adult film. Yeah. So I guess that's we would not be able to be convinced. By, uh, I mean, Joe sometimes Exotic. I'm amazed when I'm like, how is that person able to live? Like, is there any blood? <laughs> is there any blood at all in his body at this point? That's the, those are the questions I have. And then how is he not passing out? And then there's times because they always get the smallest women. You know, that even it's hard to tell when you're watching any show size and really like, you know, the is this just is. an amazingly big situation or is it this is an amazingly small situation next to a big situation? Right. You see that with Tom Cruise. You know, you go, wow, I really didn't realize he was that short. They did that in wrestling. They had extra extra pounds to somebody's weight. Or Andre Giant really wasn't like six hundred pounds yeah. and seven foot something. He was like six foot something and maybe three hundred pounds. But it's, it's really yeah. So it's it's trippy. And you know, so when you see, sometimes you'll go, I don't know if this woman's going to survive. You know, because <laughs> those are the kind of at this point, I think, am I about to am, am I about to see something where somebody this is their last film? You know, and then, and then, and then because you just go, I don't think that can happen. I really don't think this. So is you gonna, want like the uh, post. Uh, filming update, like how they do on Bar Rescue or Restaurant Impossible. Like <laughs> since, <laughs> since filming this episode, yes, I feel like Sally still doesn't walk right because, after the yes, porn. Exactly. Like, is she, did she, was this her last movie? Is she now uh, on permanent disability? Because because you know the, the, it'll be insane, and you, and it will be like say somebody Vicky size, and you know you know and a basketball player, and it's just like you know. 
you go, okay, I mean, there's no way this is going to work. This is, this is no, no. <laughs> to the point where it's like, just leave it there. Just leave everything as it is. And it's like, nope. He says, we're going to go over this time. And I'm like, oh my God. And sometimes you see on her face, like you go, it doesn't look like this is a naturally fun time for her. It looks like she is basically being tortured. It's the last filming of this. Yeah. Sally can't walk, right? She's retired from the adult industry, so, I mean, and I, she doesn't need to use a squatty potty anymore. That sort of compels sure. me to sit there and go, okay, I, I wouldn't mind seeing what, you know, large, not Marge, is uh, you know, what, what's going on over here. I wonder what it means if you only watch women. Like two women, as opposed like two two women porn, as opposed to. You mean if you're a guy, you only yeah, watch yeah. two women. It probably just means you like women. You see, that's I, what yeah, I was I thinking. Don't that's how you get out of that. That's really how I thought about it, right uh, there. Unless you're really like, trying to overcorrect, yeah, and, you, and, and you're feeling like you know what you like to see men, but you know what? No, I'm I'm going to make sure I don't like men. <laughs> so many conversations you could have, but it's, just, <laughs> but it's like so difficult with this yeah, job. right? Yeah, yeah sure is. So, I'll be honest. Like, I I, I wanted to see like a guy and a girl. I, I, I don't, I'm not like a, I don't want to see multiple people. It's well, one on one. Well, yeah, why? You. Because yeah. that's the, people like to see themselves. And in, 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 you know, when they're watching anything, when they're doing anything, oh, if he's they, bald with tattoos, I'm like, yes, let's yeah. Go. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, that's I'm kidding. That's well, I mean, dude, people do. Nothing. And so, if there are two women present, I look at it like, well, this is never going to happen. I mean, this is the, well, that's uh, exactly it. It's a fantasy. Yeah, like you may never get it. And there's a few videos I watch. I'm like, I don't think I'll ever be in that particular situation. But, but wouldn't it be cool? But wouldn't it be cool? And I'm going to enjoy yeah. this video. See, some people don't do fantasy as well as others. Do they tackle yeah. this in that show? That I keep talking about Dave. The last episode. <laughs> So Sarah knows what I'm talking about. There's a because his girlfriend's just like, come on, I want to try and spice up our love life. Oh, nice. What do you watch when you're watching porn? Oh, like what's the, what's the kinkiest stuff? And he says something that's just like laugh out loud funny. And she's like, you're into? He's like, no, I'm not into that. But I clicked on that because I was curious. Like you know, he's yeah. Like, just because I'm watching this go on the show, the 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 video that I'm watching doesn't mean I necessarily want to do it. And then something happens later on. And she's like, wait, of all the, you said that was the craziest thing, but then you're into this. So like, dude, the, the episode goes weird. That, and, and, and it's a great conversation about right. like, you know, look, I, I watch, I watch Mission Impossible and enjoy it, but I don't want to jump building from, from building to building. I don't want to be that guy, you know, but some mm-hmm. people, they do. They go, well, if you're into this, you must really want to do this. It's like, yeah. And I well, think, even like him, like he's a rapper. So like some of his songs, he, he gets pretty explicit in like, in a, in a romantic way. Oh, nice. And so his girl heard it, and she's like, wait, you're into that? He goes, no, I never have done that. I would never even think of doing that. She's like, well, you rapped about it. He goes, well, that's my rapper thing. I do that for my rapping, because people, I, I relate to people. <laughs> I'm like, this guy, yeah, that he's is, a mess. It is, it is pretty insane. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. From Ooh. 2010 to 2017, Chris Bosh played for which NBA team? <laughs> um, uh, the Golden State Warriors? No. Uh, God, the, 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 the Celtics? No. Oh, crap. The Indianapolis Pacers? No. I don't think anybody would ever name the Indianapolis Pacers for anything. Somebody's I mean, got to play there. Yeah, it is. I mean, <laughs> that is a rando team that, uh, it, that, that, that of all the teams that pull out of, the right? mat, out of your hat, you, you pull out the Pacers. Uh, the, and then you did get the answer, but it was too late. You, the Miami you, Heat. You got it. Yeah. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got a 206 421 Rock. Brian right, Beat Migs at 847 on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, my house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. Wanted, dead, or barely alive. Your old or outdated computers, monitors, and televisions, working or not. Don't trash it, recycle it. E-Cycle Washington makes it easy. 
Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations in Washington may drop off unwanted computers, monitors, and televisions at over 300 locations statewide for free. Find the location nearest you at ecyclewashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's ecyclewashington.org.